So far we have been to 10 countries. For number 11, let's go somewhere exotic. How about China? Welcome to the world's third largest city, Shanghai. Population 28 million. It was one of the first Chinese ports open to Western trade. And today it handles more than 47 million containers per year. It's the busiest port in the world. You might know Shanghai for its skyline. This is the Pudong district with three famous landmarks. The city has more than 100,000 restaurants. And today we will try one of them. Let's go to timetable. It's the creation of Stefan Stiller. It doesn't sound Chinese, does it? That's because he was born in Celle, Germany in 1966. After mandatory military service, Stiller bounced from one Michelin star restaurant to the next, eventually landing in Deidesheim in 1988, where he became chef de cuisine at restaurant Schwarzer Hahn. While working there, he noticed a vacant building across the street. Stiller bought the property and one year later opened his own fine dining restaurant. He called it Restaurant Grand Cru and after eight months, he received his first Michelin star. He moved his family to Shanghai. Ever since, he has been a presence in the city's culinary scene as a chef, entrepreneur and mentor to aspiring cooks in China. He opened Tian Table in 2016. Within five months, they had the first Michelin star. In 2019, the second, and in 2021, the third, and in 2022, the Michelin Guide added the green star. Aside from Tian Table Shanghai, Stiller also has Tian Table Guangzhou. It opened in 2021 and was awarded two Michelin stars the same year. On top of all this, Chef Stiller operates cooking school, catering business, and he's the president of the Bocuse Door team in China. We are here in the heart of Shanghai in the Changning district. Tian Table is hidden in a residential area, not far from office buildings and business parks. A great location for a three Michelin star restaurant. Inside, we are seated at a wraparound table for 20 guests. Everyone has a front row seat facing the kitchen and the prep area. The interior feels a little industrial. This is not a typical European three-star, where you have silver, gold and porcelain everywhere. Still, everything feels quality and mostly because of the workers behind it. The kitchen seems a bit crowded, like a beehive especially considering that Stiller is German. But it's a theater for the guests, so I'm totally here for it. The show begins with a visit from Chef Stiller himself. We enjoy a glass of his signature champagne as he explains his philosophy. He cooks refined, modern and creative cuisine with techniques rooted in Europe and inspired by local ingredients. We discuss the menu. It changes every six weeks, which is a huge undertaking. Today we will try menu number 41. It's a mandatory eight-course tasting menu that captures the spirit and the energy of the season. On the top of that, you can customize your experience with extra dishes from their classics and specials menu. Chef Stiller recommends the sea urchin from the classic menu. It's a fan favorite. Once he took it off the menu and so many people complained, he had to put it back on. I'm sold. He also recommends the scallops and the caviar. It's tough to choose, so we go with both. The price for the fixed menu with two classic dishes converts to 330 euros. Next, we need some wine. I go for vintage champagne, 1996 Femme de Champagne from Duval Le Roi for 815 euros. This is a prestige cuvee. It's the finest level of champagne a producer makes. The 1996 vintage means only the best wines from that year were selected. This wine is exclusive to Thai Table. It's the only restaurant in China that has it. Our first bites are Parmesan crackers, seaweed crackers and spiced macadamia nuts. We are also served a welcome tea of jasmine and fermented plum. Next is a snack inspired by the Indian street food Pani Puri. It's usually filled with chickpea, potato or onion. Here they put their own spin on it, adding papaya, mango, pine nuts and masala. It's sweet, sour, spicy and surprisingly refreshing. Our Amis bush is presented on three levels and we are told to go from lowest to highest. First, we have a rice cracker with mimola cheese aged for 12 months with grilled peas and mint. Then, a halo sanchok chip filled with its own puree, mushrooms and pine nuts. Finally, a seaweed chip with tuna tatar and caviar. Our last snack before the main show is sourdough croutons with chicken jus and freshly grated Australian black truffle. Flavors in everything so far have been stunning. I'm really enjoying this place. It has a great vibe, partly because of the music. Like the menu, the music changes with the season. Chef Stiller makes each playlist personally. 
and even puts them on Spotify. He is super approachable and easy to talk to. As chill as a three Michelin star chef can get, sipping champagne and overseeing the service. I'm loving the champagne too. At this point, my Dua Leroy is opening up and only getting better and better. The show begins with our first tasting course. We have green asparagus cooked sous vide with three emulsions. The yellow is an egg yolk sauce, the green is chai, and the black one is black garlic. Then we have a marinated hamachi from Japan with slightly fermented asparagus slices around it. Inside is 5G ham and citrus jelly. The sauce is made with fermented asparagus and yogurt. I love the creativity of this dish and it's almost a crime to destroy it. There is so much work into it, plus these tiny details make it a joy to look at. Asparagus was excellent and allowed some of the sweetness to come through, but it was the three emotions that really made it pop. You can see the work the young sous chef puts into this. The hamachi was all about layering textures that almost met in your mouth. Our next dish is from the classic menu, scallop and caviar. The scallops are from Hokkaido, Japan. They are prepared with a celery tartar and a scoop of pure blanc ice cream topped with caviar etc. number four. Ice cream seems like a question mark, but it totally works. It puts some cool sweetness into the saltiness of the caviar and scallops. The caviar dish brings us a generous helping of caviar etc. number two, with beetroot, edible flowers, and ayo blanco sauce. Our server encourages us to make a little mess. That's the only way to enjoy it. The caviar is excellent on its own, but this almond garlic sauce manages to transform it into something spectacular. Our next dish was otaro tuna, Thai pomelo, cashew and caviar in a kombucha sauce. Taptim siam pomelo is a soft and sweet fruit and grows only in southern Thailand. People pay premium and often give it as a gift because they believe that this fruit brings luck and wealth. Sweetness is the overwhelming flavor, followed by a hint of sourness on the tongue. In this dish, the sauce was super powerful and pushed my taste bud to the limit. I like the flavors, but I couldn't finish it. Next is the famous sea urchin dish that Chef Stiller can't take off the menu. I totally understand why. It's a slice of sorghum bread dipped in brown butter, balsamic vinegar, and soy sauce. Then a layer of oyster mayo, emulsified with a bit of grapeseed oil. On the top is fresh sea urchin and slices of green apple. Umami from the sea urchin, tartness from the apple, and the smokiness of the toast gave this a depth of flavors. It's explosive with every bite. Chef Stiller invites us to try a special German reasoning. It's from the same area as his first restaurant. It's a beautiful wine. Next is grilled oyster, regal number one. It starts with smoked katsubushi, then marinated and grilled oyster topped with oyster foam and powder. On the side is a salad made of cucumbers, celery, and lemon. This was such a delight. It seemed to have all the flavors present, from smoky to briny, to fresh and citrusy. There was something for every flavor center on the tongue. At one point, we were drinking our Duval Leroy 1996, and Stiller was tasting a 2006 Crystal. We decided to compare the two. We offered him a taste of ours, and he did the same. I found the Crystal to be crisp and vibrant, but with its richness and complexity, the more mature Duval Leroy destroyed it hands down. Despite its age, the Leroy felt younger. It was fun to compare these two titans of wine. At the halfway point, we have grilled king crab leg with white miso hollandaise and pickled watermelon radish. Chef Stiller recommended to take a piece of crab, dip it into the sauce and take a small piece of radish. The crab is smoky and succulent, while the white miso hollandaise sauce gives it some tangy flavors. The pickled watermelon radish adds a zesty twist. Not my favorite presentation of the evening, but I enjoyed this one. Our next one is a Chardonnay from the Sasha Moroche region from 2020. It's buttery, gorgeous wine. We keep the seafood going with our next dish. It's white Patagonian toothfish, also known as Chilean sea bass. On the bottom, we have Okinawa spinach in a bouillabaisse sauce, which is a traditional French seafood soup, finished with carpaccio made of zucchini. From the spinach, we have slightly earthy taste. The fish itself is soft and buttery. 
perfection. Our next course draws inspiration from India. On the bottom we have a smoked lentil stew, then foie gras, topped with crumble of pistachio, lentils and rice. Everything sits in a Baduban curry from Tamil Nadu. On top there are three different textures of plum. So many flavors here. Savory, nutty, spicy and fruity. Next is a palate cleanser. It's a Greek yogurt, salad and a sorbet of apple and cucumber juice with Monkey 47 gin. In the mortar we have fennel pollen and mint leaves, along with liquid nitrogen that freezes the oils and flavors locking them in. I love the dramatic tableside theater. The dish is great too. The range of cold temperatures was intense and energizing. Our main course is pork in three ways, from three countries. It can be difficult to find good quality pork in China, so they usually need to bring it in. On the bigger plate we have pork tenderloin from Canada, slow cooked, seared in burnt leek soup. It's exceptional. Then we have sucking pig with spring vegetables, bell peppers and artichoke. It's a specialty from the Guangdong region of China. It was tasty, but I found it a little bit dry. Finally we have Iberico pork from Spain. It's spare rib, marinated and grilled in sordo crisp. This one I liked the most. The dish was delightful. It had a crispy texture and outstanding taste. With this course we have a German Pinot Noir from 2014. When you think Pinot Noir, you probably don't think Germany. But this wine is something else. It is a nose of rye fruit with cherry and dark chocolate on the palate. And a beautifully long finish. Our dessert is umeboshi from Japan. Served with merengue cookie with matcha powder and dried strawberry. Umeboshi is also known as salted Japanese plum. It's salty and sour, but in this dessert it's offset by the pure sweetness of the cookie. It's a unique dessert with enormous flavor. With it comes a champagne liqueur from Solera. It's a sweet ratafia wine made from Chardonnay and Pinot Noir grapes. It has layers of fruit and spice and a long lingering finish. More dessert. This is a roasted dry gelato with avocado and frozen mango finished with a sesame chip. It's quite sweet with some savory elements to balance it. The presentation is playful. I like it. Our final dessert is toasted brioche. With a layer of white chocolate, sweet cooked pineapple, foam of piña colada, sorbet of coconut and topped with herbs and coconut crisp. A work of art, both in presentation and taste. Perry for signal the end of the meal is fast approaching. First is pava, which is saltine and peach strudel. The smiley face is a passion fruit mousse with coconut tart. The cherry is a chocolate mousse cake with a cherry liquor. And finally, the classic canali. Each one had a unique levels of sweet, tart and bitter. This is a great effort by the pastry team. Then we have a farewell from the chef. We have chocolate with amaretto and inside the Lego man is watermelon jelly. The Lego is a clever touch. I love how they tap into our childhood to bring back memories. We are not quite done. Last, we are given a selection of bonbons. Each one is special in its own way. There is white chocolate, beetroot, mojito, rosemary apricot and yuzu. I witnessed a really nice moment with Chef Stiller and his team. They were celebrating two anniversaries. So Chef Christian Stoop was celebrating one year with the company and director of operation that Park was celebrating too. A good leader has strong followers. I have great respect for these people who are focused and dedicated to their work. You know, I always find a reason to buy a bottle of Krug. But here I was more than happy to join their celebration because I was amazed by these people and the fabulous work they provide that day. The total for two of us is just over 2000 euros. After the meal we talked with Chef Stiller some more. He said in Asia most European chefs bend to the local tastes and tone down the salt and acidity. But not Chef Stiller. He does his thing and if people like it they come back. Not to say the environment hasn't had an effect on him. In many ways Chef Stiller is like a Zen master. He has a calm and gentle way about him. No doubt this has helped him to earn the success he enjoys today. Over a Yamakasi whiskey, he tells us the words he lives by. He says you don't always have to represent your country or your local kitchen. The goal should be to innovate and do something different, not to be 100% perfect. I think we can all use a little bit of his wisdom. As Chef Stiller says, innovation before perfection. And that does it for this episode. 
Thank you for joining me. If you like this video, hit the subscribe. See you next time. You can call me stupid.